When it comes to communication between microservices, you often hear the debate about orchestration versus choreography. Should you have a controller process that orchestrates everything, which service does what and when, like a conductor in an orchestra, or should every component make its own decisions, but following some contract that were agreed upon ahead of time, so that some expected behavior would emerge in the end, like a ballet? For example, you can build an order flow for an e-commerce application using the choreography approach by building on top of events. Where every step of the workflow just deals with its own event and does its own thing. The advantage here is that they are loosely coupled through the message contract, and each step can scale independently. Even though in a sequential flow like this, and in the face of a shared regional concurrency limit on Lambda, it's debatable how much independent scaling actually matters here. But it is simpler in the sense that when you look at each function. All you care about is the input event and what you do with it. The downside is that it's hard to monitor and report on the end-to-end -end status of orders. How long did each step take, and how long did the whole thing take, and how do you implement timeout for restaurants to accept an order or timeout on the whole order flow? It will need to be implemented in every function. And every function needs to implement some consistent error handling behavior as well. It all gets a bit clumsy and messy. And from a business point of view, are these really separate processes, or are they just different steps within one workflow? And for critical components like this, wouldn't you want someone or some team to take ownership of the whole process and be responsible for it, rather than a room full of people going? I don't know. I only look after this bit. So with step functions, you have a really powerful orchestration service that can help you model and execute these business workflows. And personally, if I was to implement this for real, I would have gone with step functions to implement this order flow, probably like this. And feel free to pause and take a moment to see if you can understand what's going on here with just this diagram. The advantage is that all the issues we just discussed around observability and error handling and timeouts are just so so easy to deal with, and the workflow itself is a standalone entity that is modeled and the source controlled, and not just the sum of a bunch of logical components that you assemble together in your head. You can actually see it in this case, literally in the Step Functions console. The downside is that. You have to learn yet another service and pay for step functions, which is one of the more expensive services on AWS. Although for business critical workflows like this, I think it's worth it. There are also scalability concerns with standard workflows because there is a soft limit on the number of state transitions per second per region. So you have to watch out for this and ask for a raise when you start to process more and more messages. And my rule of thumb is to use orchestration within the boundary context of a microservice or a business domain, but use choreography between different boundary contexts, because within the boundary context, I have a fairly focused purpose or a set of responsibilities, and there are hopefully a small number of components that they can actually all fit inside my head at the same time, and since they all work together to achieve some specific business capability. Like processing payments, so they form a highly cohesive unit and I own everything within this boundary context. So I'm free to change and reorganize things, so long as I don't break my contract with other services. I often see workflows within the boundary context being choreographed through messages in SQS queues or SNS topics, and I generally think they are a bad idea. Even though I love using events to integrate different services together. But I think it's a bad idea when it's done inside the same boundary context, because the workflow doesn't exist as a standalone concept, but only exists as a sum of a bunch of loosely connected functions. That makes them very difficult to reason about and debug. And there's no easy way to implement even simple things like workflow level timeouts. If this is what you have today, you should consider moving these workflows to step functions instead. 
But then between boundary contexts, I will publish and subscribe to events through SNS topics, event bridge buses, Kinesis streams, etc., so that different parts of the larger system can stay loosely coupled and build on each other's events and evolve and fail independently. On the topic of event bridge versus SNS, I also wrote a blog post on why you should consider using EventBridge instead of SNS for new projects nowadays. So please go ahead and give that a read. But orchestration and choreography don't have to be mutually exclusive. For example, inside my state machine, where I'm introducing state changes, like changing the status of an order from pending to processed, I will publish these changes as events to the event bus so that other systems can listen and react to these state changes, and therefore bringing choreography back into the picture. Again, as a rule of thumb, prefer orchestration within the boundary context, but choreography between different boundary contexts.